Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is going to be on an observation of a few of the soft corals that I have. How they've grown, how I have had to change them and put them in different uh, scenarios, in different areas, lighting, and so on. So I hope you enjoy the video, find it interesting and educational. But before, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up, and smash that notification bell. So let's take a deep dive into it and check it out. Okay, so the first soft coral that I thought I'd bring up is this little Tusto. I have it on the, I would say, on the upper quadrant. Uh, I got it at Worldwide Corals. And uh, strangely enough, it was like a typical little Tusto, but for whatever reason, as you must be aware, all corals take different behaviors and different attitudes in reference to the uh, tank condition, lighting, water, chemistry, etc., etc. This one turned out to have, as you notice, a trunk. I mean, they all have trunks, but this one, as you're noticing, the trunk is like elongated, it's slender, and then the actual head is small. Now, why it's behaving this way and why it has grown this way beats me. I don't know, but I thought I'd show it to all of you out there. That, again, what might work for me might not work for somebody else. And uh, the behavior of corals in reference to your ecosystem, it might uh, behave different. It might grow different, a different pattern, etc., etc. So this is the first one that I thought I'd bring up. Very strange. I mean, I've been in this hobby for many years and I have never seen uh, tutsto leather grow on elongated trunk like you see here but then the head really doesn't accompany it it's like a little head but well that's its behavior that's its species so i thought i'd show you this one first and now the other tutsto that i have this is uh, a japanese tutsto it's not doing very well i had it on the if you follow me for a while you notice that i had it on the front right below the other one that i just previously showed you and I noticed that it it wasn't doing too too great so I moved it to the side now it's not dead uh, by research any of these tooth stalls or in general leathers as long as they're attached they're fine they're uh, they're alive they're healthy the only thing that I'm having with this um, tooth stall this leather coral is if you notice the uh, feelers they barely come out it does shed they do shed like they're supposed to shed, but matter of fact, recently it had shed already, but the feelers don't come out that, that much. So I don't know if it's a chemistry problem. Uh, and now that I'm talking about chemistry, I went ahead about a few weeks ago and I sent out the ICP test analysis and I already got the results about a week and a half ago. And I did have, I have, uh, three to four, um, uh, trace elements that were uh, one of them zinc and others were very very low so i went ahead and i i uh, purchased some um full spectrum or broad spectrum so we call it uh, elements to replace the trace elements that i'll go into more deep um, possibly on the next video where i'll show you actually the results and i'll show you what i'm uh administering to the tank to uh, bring up those levels. But well, that's a conversation for the next video. But it might be that, but so far I'm keeping an eye on it. It's there. It's, uh, it did have a little tie rod when I got it and it was about, oh man, it was about a fourth of what you see now. And if you notice it's split because actually there was a black tie rod in the middle that was holding it to the plug. But I noticed that it was like strangling it or something, so I cut it off. And there it is. It's attached to the plug. It hasn't moved. So it is alive. But those feelers, they really don't come out that much. And the results of having that tie rod, that's why you see that it kind of looks like split in the middle. Because it kept growing, growing uh, on each side, and it created actually two actual heads. So I'm keeping an eye on it, but I thought this is another coral that I thought I'd show you guys when it comes to soft corals. Now this one 
It's called, it's a soft core, it's called a uh, cespitularia. It's of the family of the zinnias. Now, I bought this one for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's rare. I've seen this cespitularia that they're all white. Like the zinnias, you know, like the pumping zinnias. But this one, uh, it's got like these trunks, as you notice, these fingers, and it's purple. So you have the trunks being purple and then the little heads, the feelers are white. So being that the case that it, it cascades from a trunk when it comes to overcrowding or taking over the tank, it'd be very, very rare. I mean, it, it can happen, but not as, uh, I would say, as fast as the Xenias. Now, these guys do great. Uh, with iodine and iodine is one of the trace elements that were very very low so I've already in the process of, of getting the uh, iodine and then I'll, I'll go over this on the next video which as I mentioned briefly I'm going to talk about the ICP test analysis but this is the other soft coral it was a little smaller I don't think it really has grown that that much but if they grow uh, by what I see and you know me Eddie the researcher uh, they kind of, those trunks will get like higher, they'll extend, and maybe from the body of it might come out like a, another trunk. But it's not like the zinnias that they just, you know, like on their base, they go ahead and they um, start to, you know, like, like roots, they start to grow and grow and grow. So this is not as invasive when it comes to growth, but it will grow uh, eventually bigger taller and with other branches coming out i i found it very interesting and rare as a matter of fact you know so that's the other one that i thought i'd show you guys uh it's in the upper part of the tank as you noticed and it's doing fine it's doing great now when the lights start to ramp down it kind of like uh crumbles up like uh like a prune <laughs> you know it, it just uh crumbles up and you actually think that it's dead but it's not uh, it's just, you know, like uh, those feelers that you're looking at now, they just crumble down and they kind of like fall to the sides until sunrise, you know, with a uh, radions, with a radion. And then they go ahead and they open up to receive the nutrient because all these corals are photosynthetic. So they actually uh, go by the Swiss Intelli that they uh, reach from the photosynthesis. And then, of course, we have here the Cinolaria. This inner area also is pretty rare. It has grown, I mean, tremendous. When I got this inner area, it was, I mean, the size of the plug, to be honest with you. I've had it, I'd say, for about a year, year and a half, and it started to grow. It was a little, I'm talking about a little frag. It started to grow. Now, on this one, I have kept the tie rod. So what happened is, if you can relate uh, to the tooth stole that it kind of like split in half because it was held by the actual tie rod. Well, what this did, as you notice, it branched out. It gave two branches. So it's humongous. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the video uh, because I have it on the macro lens. And I'm going to take the, the, the macro lens off and I'm going to do like a regular shot so you can appreciate how it actually looks uh, in reference to the whole tank. So hold on one second. Okay, and then here you have, uh, I took out the, the macro adapter and then I pulled the camera back. So here you can appreciate more or less the size that it has actually taken. It's always in this configuration, but it changes. Uh, I mean, if I was to keep a camera like a live stream, you would see its behavior, how it actually changes during the day. It usually... Uh, goes under this direction because of the MP10, which is on the opposite side, on the left side. So what it does is, like I've mentioned before in previous videos, that the water is going to shoot to the wall of the tank on the right, and then it's going to do like a circular motion back to the MP10. So uh, that's why uh, this coral tends to always look towards the left because of the, the, uh, the wave, the water stream coming back towards the MP10, but it does change in configuration. And again, like I said before, it has grown, I mean, exponentially. Now, due to the fact, as I mentioned briefly, that my iodine 
is low and I, I'm in the process of getting the iodine, these, all these soft corals, especially the leathers and all that, they love iodine. But when it comes to that, you have to be very careful when it comes to dosing. And that'll probably be another video that I'll do explaining how to actually introduce iodine uh, into your reef tank. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, educational, and fun. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell. Now, coming up, most probably on the next video, give it like two, two and a half weeks, I'm going to do it on the ICP test analysis because I've noticed that I cannot keep either Montes or SPS. What happens is I introduce them to the tank, acclimate them and all that, and after like two, three weeks, they start to pale out, and in a month, they turn white and they die. So I went ahead and I did send it out and I got the results, and there's four trace elements. One, which was zinc, I mean, was undetectable. And the other ones, like iodine and cobalt, and the other ones uh, were very minimal. So I already know uh, what the issue is. I've already bought uh, certain uh, trace elements that I'm introducing to the tank, and that'll remedy the problem. Then let's say like after three or four months, I'll do another test. But that'll probably be the next week's video where I'll actually show you a screenshot of the laptop of the res what the results were. And then I'm going to show you, excuse me, I'm going to show you uh, the actual uh, liquids, trace elements that I'm using to compensate for the deficiencies. So like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing, thanks for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.